So here we have a table of data and we have two numerical variables. We have height and weight. And we also have something categorical there, which is the name of the person, but we don't need to graph that. We're just going to take these numerical values and graph those. So the first thing we need to do is figure out which one is the dependent and which one is the independent variables because your dependent variable will always go on a vertical axis with your independent going on the horizontal. So height depends on weight or weight depends on height. It's more likely to be that your weight depends on how tall you are. So weight will be on the vertical axis. Now when you're drawing a scatter plot, think of little dashed lines coming out of each of these points on your scale. So along here 155, 160, 165. If you think of a little line coming up from there, what you're trying to do is match up that line with the one that comes off on the horizontal. So I'm actually going to draw those on here just to show you. So that's the horizontal lines there and now I've added vertical lines. What you're trying to do is match up these two points. It's just like when you're plotting any other kind of graph. So height is our x variable and weight is our y variable. So at the point 190 on this scale, which is this line here, we want to draw a dot for the point 82. So that's going to be between 80 and 85 and it's a little bit lower than halfway. So you come across from there and you put a dot there on the 190. And the same thing follows for 168. Along here you find 168 which is about there and you go up to about where 61 crosses which is about there and you draw a dot. And there we have the dots that we've drawn. So this is 190 to 82 is here. 190 and 82. This next one 168 and 61 is here. 168, 61. 175, 68 is here. 175, 68. So you can see why it's really important that you plot the correct uh, variable on the correct axis because if we had flipped these and we had height going along here and weight going along here, this scatter plot would look very different. When you're looking at a scatter plot and interpreting it, there are four things that you should look for and talk about. And those are the direction, and that could be positive or negative. The next one is the form, and that would be either linear or nonlinear and linear being those straight line graphs that we're used to seeing. The next one is the strength and that could be weak, moderate or strong. And the last one is outliers, whether there are any outliers in the scatter plot that you can see. So these are the four things we look for. First one, direction. Next one, form, then the strength, and if there are any outliers. Let's start with the direction. Now remember this could be positive or negative. When you are looking at a linear graph, a straight line graph, which you've seen for the last few years of high school in maths, going in this direction was positive and going in this direction was negative. So if we're climbing up the hill, we're going in a positive direction. If we're going down the hill, we're going in a negative direction. Down, negative. Up, positive. And you always look from left to right. So this would be positive and this would be negative. That's when it follows a straight line. When you see a scatter plot that generally follows this shape, that's how we describe it as well. So if you had a scatter plot that looked something like this, and from left to right, as these dots increased going from left to right, they also increased going up the scale, like so, then that would have a generally positive relationship. And similarly, if we went down the page, like so, generally from left to right across this scale, they're all going downwards. So as the independent variable increases going up here, the dependent variable decreases going down here. So we start off with low values here 
and high values, low values for the independent and high values for the dependent. They're both up here. And as the independent increases going across the page, the dependent is decreasing going across the page. This is a generally negative relationship. And if I take out that line there, that's what your scatter plot might look like. So that line there was how we knew what positive and negative were. Can you see that these generally follow that shape and these generally follow that shape? So when you can see them all roughly climbing up a hill and these ones all climbing down the hill, even though if they're not in a perfect line, they have a generally positive or generally negative direction. Let's look at form. Now the form is talking about whether the shape follows that linear pattern. So if we had dots that looked like this, they're generally following a fairly straight line pattern. And these ones here are generally following a fairly straight line pattern too. But what about something like this? Does that have a straight line pattern to it? I can see more of a shape that goes something like this to that one. It's got a sort of curve to it. Whereas this is generally straight down the page and this is generally straight up the page. This one has a curve. So these two are linear. This is positive linear and this is negative linear, but they're both linear. And this one would be non-linear because it doesn't follow a straight line. Some other non-linear forms might look like this. So again, we've got a bit of a curve going up that way on the graph, not a straight line, not a linear shape. You might see something like this, like a parabola. And again, your shape here is looking something a bit more like this, which is not a straight line. There's a definite relationship. This is There's definitely a pattern of some kind here, but the form is not linear. Or you might see something sort of like the flip of this that goes down the page in a curvy sort of way like this. And again, you can see a shape that's a little bit more in this direction like that. So that's negative. It's, it's decreasing across the page, but it's not in that straight line kind of way, in that linear sort of way. So all of these are examples of non-linear form. The next thing we look for is the strength of the correlation, the strength of the relationship that these two things have together. So for example, height and weight are probably fairly strongly related, but height and IQ, for example, probably don't have much of a relationship at all. So along this top line here, I'm going to show you three positive linear graphs. This one here has a very strong relationship because they're all very close to a sort of line shape. This one here, again, it's positive and it's linear. It does have a line to it, but it's not nearly as closely bunched together as this one is. And this one over here, you can see that they're all generally increasing up the page, but they're very, very spread out. They're not all close in tight to a line. So all three of these are positive and all three of them are linear. But this one would have a very strong relationship. This one would have a moderate relationship and this one would have a weak relationship. So they, there is some association between whatever this independent variable is and this dependent variable, but it's not nearly as strong in it as a correlation as these two variables have to one another. And it works the same for the negative relationships. This one here would be a very strong negatively linear relationship and this would be a sort of moderate linear negative linear relationship moderately strong and then this one would have a linear negative relationship but it's not as strong you can see that it's going as we as the independent variable increases the dependent variable decreases and so there is that correlation but it's not that strong so this one would be a strong negatively linear relationship. This one would be a moderate negative linear relationship. And this one would be a weak negative linear relationship. Something else to watch out for 
if the dots are perfectly in a line in either direction, like so, then we say that these have a perfect relationship. So rather than just calling these strong, these are strong, but they're so strong that they're perfect. So this one is a perfect positive relationship and this one is a perfect negative relationship. Another thing you might see is when the dots are completely random. They seem to have absolutely no correlation whatsoever. There doesn't seem to be a pattern. They don't follow a shape. It's not that it's non-linear. There's just nothing going on that seems to indicate that these are related to each other in any way. And that generally indicates that they're not. So when you see something like this and it's random, then what we say is that there is no association. There's no association between this and this. The two things, they don't affect one another. This definitely does not depend on this. And what if you saw a scatter plot like this? There is this kind of association. We can see it's positive and it seems to be linear and it's a moderately strong relationship. But what the heck is going on with that out there? Now that is an outlier. That's how outliers appear on scatter plots. So this is really important to mention because some of the statistics that we're going to talk about in later tutes, in particular the R value, is heavily affected by outliers. So you'd need to exclude this from your data before using something like an R value. So have a go at describing some of these in terms of direction, form, strength and the presence of outliers. So this first one here I would say that the direction is negative because it seems to be going decreasing down the page like we're rolling down the hill. As the independent values increase, these dependent values decrease. So this has got a negative relationship. That's the direction. Now in terms of the form, is it linear or nonlinear? I'd say it's generally linear. It seems to follow that straight line. The strength, just getting rid of those lines so you can see it again. This is fairly strong. I would probably call this about a moderate in terms of the strength. It's not all over the place. They're quite close together. They do sort of follow that line fairly well. And are there any outliers in this one? No, not that we can see. This second one here, the direction, well, it's positive. It is as independent values increase, the dependent values increase. So it is positive across the page, but the form is not linear. Because if you see the pattern kind of goes like that, this shape is all curvy. It's not a straight line. So that one's non-linear. The association is fairly moderately strong and there aren't any outliers. This one over here, this looks like a perfect positive linear relationship. No outliers, it's the direction is positive, the form is linear, and they're all perfectly in aligned. So it's perfect strength. This one, it's a little bit hard to tell, but if you look, roughly as the independent values increase, so do the dependent values. So this is generally going in a positive direction, up the hill. But there's not that much strength to this one because they're all kind of higgledy-piggledy. They're all over the place. So this one's fairly weak association. The correlation is, is quite weak and there aren't any outliers. This one over here, there's a linear relationship that I can see. It sort of follows this trend. And as we go across the page from left to right, independent values are increasing, but dependent values are decreasing, which means we've got this negative relationship here. At first glance, it seems like it's got a really strong association. They all seem to fall pretty well along a line that goes down the center, except that there's this clown affecting them out here. So we do have an outlier. So you can't say anything about the strength of this one just yet, unless you say strong, except for the fact that there's this hinky outlier. And what about this last one over here? To me, that looks completely random. That is a random looking scatter plot. There's Nothing going on that makes it look like it has a pattern of any kind. So that one has no association. These two, they got nothing going on. 